So we wanted to put all of the accessory stuff in the back of the car and it really works out on this GR Super chassis because there is such a big channel, an open channel here where the factory fuel tank was. So it allowed us to put the electric power steering pump from the MR2, our DC power alternator, and our anti-gravity battery back here. All with a ton of room left, we can still add stuff back here if we need to. I think we're, I think this is all we need for the accessories though. Uh, besides wiring and then plumbing, uh, we probably won't utilize any more of this area, but it's just nice that we were able to tuck this stuff up out of the way and in the back, adding better weight distribution to the chassis since we have a lot of the weight in the front of the car, obviously, and needing to add some more in the back. Now, I think that the weight distribution is gonna be really good once we get it together and get it on scales. Uh, we're gonna do that in the near future just to kind of see where we're at since for now we're finally getting a lot of these accessories on the car. Um, see, we're gonna mount the oil tank. Um, some of the plumbing, the fire extinguisher bottle, all of that stuff is now gonna start being strategically placed within the chassis to help us with the weight distribution and making sure that we are achieving our goal of a 50-50 weight balance because that's what this thing came with from the factory. This is probably one of the weirdest setups I have ever experienced. I know it is common in the off-road community, uh, but not very common in drifting or any race cars that I've seen, if they have this or not. So anyway, this is our alternator. This is a DC power. 270 amp alternator and this is what we ran on the pro car on the 2jz the same configuration uh, and we are running this off of the drive shaft the drive shaft shop drive shaft so pretty weird setup and something like i said this is brand new to me uh, this is something that we knew we were going to have to do because we don't want to drive any of the accessories off of the Judd engine. Uh, now the Judd does come with an alternator on the driver, lower driver's side of the engine, but it's only a 35 amp, so it's just enough to probably power the car to start it. Uh, you know, after we start driving, we can flip a lot, of the, a lot more of the switches on to power the rest of the car because we're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, running the fans, the headlights, the taillights fuel pumps, etc. everything is going to be drawing a lot of amperage and 35 amps is not gonna cut it. So that'll be, 35 amps will be just enough for us to fire the car up, maybe run one fan and a fuel pump. Obviously the injectors and everything else that is needed as well, but it's basically just gonna be able to warm the car up and be able to get it on track. And when we get it on track, we'll be able to turn the rest of the electronics on that we need and that will be powered by this DC power 270 amp alternator. So Dom made this custom V-belt pulleys under the drive shaft. So this bolts to the front of the 8.8 .8 rear end in between the drive shaft. It turned out phenomenal. Dom did a great job and he did the math to not overspin the alternator. Now, one thing that we didn't know and that I now know is that DC Power in the off-road community offers clutches on their pulley system so that when you brake really hard and you lock the rear up, it will spin instead of you know, abruptly stopping. Because when you have that much wheel speed and you're spinning that fast, this uh, belt is probably gonna slip and potentially burn it right off. So that's something we didn't know. We did use a V-belt, which is good. So it will have some slip to it no matter what. And since we are doing a lot more road racing this thing than drifting, I, I think we'll probably be all right. It's just gonna be a wear item that we're gonna have to check on just in case, um, since we don't have the clutch set up. And Dominic had already installed this, and then we found out about the clutch uh, system for the alternator. So we're just gonna have to check it, make sure it's all good and it'll be a wear item until we get back to this to redo it with the clutch system on the front of the DC power alternator. But for now, I think it turned out awesome and it should do exactly what we needed to for, uh, for the track. This is our anti-gravity battery. This thing only weighs 15 pounds, has a ton of cranking amps and is made for racing. So they put it in this style box, which is basically a direct replacement for a lot of vehicles. Um, this is what we're gonna be running because it has the amount of cranking amps that we need to power and turn over the high compression engine of the Judd V10 and get all 10, 10 cylinders moving so that thing fires up. Uh, this thing is very smart. It comes with a lot of really cool features on it and is the best compact, lightweight racing batteries that you can get. So we're gonna mount it in the back here. Dom found a good spot for it right up in this area along with the other accessories, making use of all the open space right here. This is kind of nice that I had this like nice big gas tank in this area. 
mount it all high because this gives us a lot of good room to mount all these accessories. We still have to, have to bang that metal in a little bit first. Looking good. We have so many cool updates on the chassis and the car now. So after we got the transmission in, the transmission mount, we're able to get our drive shaft length, which we sent to drive shaft shop. And they quickly turned around this custom carbon fiber drive shaft, which is super short, super light, and it's gonna work awesome for the project. Dominic nailed this drive shaft loop. So what this does is if we break a U-joint, which is unlikely, knock on wood, uh, this will keep the drive shaft in line so it doesn't like bang around. This is a safety thing that most organizations uh, require for the car. So Dom bang that out, looks great. And drive shaft is in and I am stoked. You can see all the little weights that are glued to it. These carbon drive shafts, everything is uh, glued. They still have uh, metal ends coming off for the U-joints made out of aluminum, keeping everything extremely light and awesome. All right, today started a bit slow. We got a couple parts we ordered, aren't gonna work, super disappointing, but our seats just showed up from Ricardo, so I think the day just got a little better. I think you guys are gonna be stoked on these too. Woo -wee. These are the Recaro. P1300s. This is like the first time I ever got these seats. They're like the baddest ass seats on the planet for race cars. We put this on the on the rubber. Dude. Dude. Look at that. Yeah, I'm pumped on these. These things are freaking sick. Damn, dude. These are them boys. The P1300 GT lightweight LWs. A really thick carbon core base for the seat. Nice floor. Interior. I sat in it a little bit ago. Thing feels super comfy. Really stoked on these things. These are the first, this is the first P1300 I've ever owned. Always wanted these. Stoked to put them in a Formula Supra. Big thanks to Recaro. And uh, Dom is starting to get some mounts on here. We'll see how it fits up in the car and make some adjustments and get the seat seating position sorted. Oh, actually, dude, look at that. That's perfect. <laughs> it touches on. Finally, the something slightly easy. <laughs> yeah, so basically, we would do something like that. We could just like angle cut it and cap off the end. Yeah. And then weld that, weld this. And then maybe back here, we'll put a plate, eighth inch plate first, weld it in. If we just cut two of these, we can lay the seat on it and see how it will be. Seat brackets came out sick. We're probably not gonna run a passenger seat for the most part, but uh, we do have the option of putting one in. So Dom did put a nice frame in here. Driver's side is looking sick, all mounted up. Ricardo seat mounts, everything is coming together. And pumped to be able to sit in this thing and pretend like I'm driving it. Seating position, baby. Looking good, seating position feels good. This thing's super comfy. Head height's good, we're good on the roll cage here. Uh, still fit padding with a little bit of room on the head. And then um, eventually we'll get our hob and our steering wheel and get the distance and, and uh, all of that sorted out. Uh, but we can mount the seat now and then we can mount the tilt and pedal box. So things are gonna start coming together pretty quick here for the form of the Supra, baby. Yeah. Honestly, it feels good like this though. It feels like the spot. And then this should come up a little bit. I'll be right here. Throw a reverse entry real quick. A little, uh, a little reverse.
All right, guys, we are on to mounting the Tilton pedal box. This is the 800 series box. Since we can't not touch everything and uh, Dom has to modify everything, we're gonna do a little bit of trimming to fit it better on the floor and still have um, six mounting holes, which would be just fine. So we're just gonna trim this off right here and here um, just to make it a little bit more compact on the floor of the Supra, which will make it a little easier for us to mount up and it should have plenty six holes for mounting should be fine so here we go Tom's got the one side tacked up, bolted up. Looking good. Just working on making a template for this side right here. It's gonna be a little bit tougher, but be able to fill that gap. Basically do the same thing over here to here. And the uh, Dylan pedal box will be finished here in a little bit. Strictly for cosmetics, right Coos? Speed holes. Speed holes. Even though you're not even gonna see this after we get the floor plate oh, yeah. on oh, top of it. Forgot about that. <laughs> it's still gonna look good underneath though. Not necessarily just cosmetics because it is lightening it up. So, True. weight reduction. Coos has got it. Scientific. <laughs> You know it's winter in California when you break out all the heat lamps you got. <laughs> Just trying to keep the boys moving, you know what I'm saying? Keep the blood flowing. Keep them up all night. The cars the cars the bill. Buns the burn. Buns the burn. <laughs> Alright guys, it's oil tank day. This is our Peterson 12 quart oil tank. Uh, and you can order these, they offer them like dash 16, dash 12. So we did a dash 12 on a return in the feed. And a dash, it's like a dash 16 for the oil pump. But Dom's getting ready to get this thing mounted in. Found a good location for it. Only has to go through the floor through a single layer of material, which is nice. And uh, start getting this thing mounted up. Boom. So that bottom hole is gonna act as the resting mount. Also, how we can drain it underneath the car. Uh, and then Dom is gonna make some sort of bracket that will bolt to the intrusion bars off the side of the roll cage. And the oil tank will be fully secured.
Oh. All right, guys, so Dom has the bracket to mount our oil tank in the car. Pretty much sorted out. Uh, next thing we got to do is weld the bung in for this, which is an immersion heater, so that we can preheat the oil uh, before we fire the Formula Supra up. Now, you don't have to preheat the oil, but you do have to preheat the coolant, which we will be doing. Immersion heaters are relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things, so we might as well throw one in the uh, oil tank and just warm up the oil as we're warming up the coolant anyways. You know, can't hurt. So um, we're gonna weld this bung in. First, we gotta take apart the tank and make sure that this is going to clear all the baffling inside where we're gonna weld it in. Um, so we're gonna take it apart now. I'll show you guys what's inside. So here's the oil tank taken apart. This is the bottom baffle to the tank. You can see this little notch cutting it right there. That's gonna line up with the tube down there. And then the next thing that would go on would be the top baffle, which is this one. So all the oil comes, returns from the top right here and then trickles down. And what this tries to do is, what? Get the air out of the oil as much as possible before it hits the bottom. In theory, the oil shoots in there and it wants to swirl around, around the outside. Yeah. yeah. And that, and the baffling stops it from sloshing, basically. Those, those are more to keep the oil from sloshing when the car's Oh yeah, when you're driving, of yeah. course. Yeah. Rather from than coming de up. Rather than de-aerating it, yeah. Okay. And the and then they put the return back to the tank right here. Like Dom's saying, right up against the side of the tank so that it can try to swirl in. But aerating is a serious problem with dry sumps. And uh, that's why we have the ARE to try to help with that air oil separation. Um, one step further than just worrying about it going right that back into the tank. We have nothing like drilling a hole in a really expensive oil tank. That's a wrap on the night. Dom killed it. Little tank looks sick. Uh, it's like 1.30, so we're gonna go get some sleep. See you guys in the morning. is officially sorted. We have the Recaro P1300 fitted. The seat is feels super safe. It has these extra bolsters here right for your shoulders so you can really tighten up nice if you're coming into some really tight, tight fast corners. Uh, we have the tilt and pedal box fitted. We just need the master cylinders and a drive-by-wire system officially hooked up to that. And what I'm really stoked on is our brand new OMP carbon fiber steering wheel and quick release hub. Uh, this is the probably most robust and best quick release I've ever owned. I've had a few different ones and this one's really cool just because uh, it has like multiple location points and a locator pin for you to put your steering wheel on. It locks really solid and you know that it's on there. There's no 
second guessing or having to pull up, you just know that it's locked on. Stoked to finally have the cockpit sorted, and thank you guys for watching this episode of Formula Supra. Stay tuned, because we obviously have a ton more to still do.